Okay. Death Note's done. I gotta do Last Exile. I gotta do... Uh... Crap. Uh... I'm running out of stuff. I still haven't finished Last Exile yet. What am I gonna do? I may actually have to... I may actually have to skip a week. I could. It'd be easy. Yes, young Jedi. You know what must be done. I could always just... play video games. Do it. Get into the dark side. No. No, I can't. Then I shall have you rub my tummy, for this is pleasing to me. Wait. I know what must be done. Hey everybody, it's Baron J, and this week, don't freak out, I'm doing a game series. Oh god. But yeah, these games came out in the Humble Bundle, and holy crap was I happy. I played these so much when I was a youngling, and they're still about as fun as I remember. Star Wars Dark Forces was one of LucasArts' first entries into the FPS genre, and uh, rightfully so, it was acclaimed for being generally awesome. Using a bunch of blasters and weaponry was awesome, especially coming from the Star Wars universe. You've got your standard red, uh, pew pew model, complete with Stormtrooper accuracy function, which which, by that, I mean you press the alt attack button and it fires everywhere, but really, really fast. You've got the Wookiee Bowcaster, which is that thing that you see Chewie carry around but barely ever use, thermal detonators, and a cavalcade of other energy weapons. However, the main complaint from the fan base was the lack of a very specific energy based weapon, mainly being everybody asking, Where the hell is my friggin' lightsaber? So, Dark Forces 2 answered this outcry by putting you back in the shoes of Kyle Katarn, the main player in Dark Forces and most of these games. Katarn is a renegade who subverts smuggling operations for the Rebel Alliance after defecting from the Empire's army. During a routine investigation, assumedly through some sort of 90s CGI machine, he finds himself wrapped up in an evil plot involving the remnant of the Empire and the Force. And yes, the cutscenes are live action and goofy as hell. Wait, 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 wait a second, is that, is that Riker? Ah, uh, no, I don't know who this guy is. Now, the main problem with the first game, it's not terribly hard, but somehow the way forward in some areas is really confusing to find, and not to mention a lot of the level Level design is super similar. Let's ask these people for help. Please don't hurt me. I'm sorry, I, I didn't really no do- No blasters, I... no blasters! Hey, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Fine, I'll just leave, Jesus. Also, you might be wondering the same thing I did. I've been playing this game for like two hours, and where the hell is my goddamn future sword? For the first seven or eight levels of the game, all you have are the guns. Then, only then, do you get your lightsaber and force powers. However, then, the gameplay changes somewhat and becomes a different beast altogether. The saber is obviously a one-shot kill to most of the enemies, but it's close range, so 90% of the time you're just running around and flailing this thing around only when you run out of ammo. There are actually boss duels, but once again, flailing and running around and occasionally using a force power somewhere. The powers themselves are pretty fun. Force pull and speed, which do the obvious, pull weapons and items out of the enemy's hands or somewhere out of reach, and run super fast. Force jump, which is incredibly useful, but is triggered unintuitively with the F key, instead of just, I don't know, the fucking space bar. Healing, which is handy as hell. Absorb, which lets you take in force attacks and fill your force energy. Blinding, which is basically a flashbang. Persuasion, which makes you invisible, and a bonus power, protection, which negates damage and you only get it for being on the light side the whole game. Now, the dark side powers, however, are where this gets really fucking fun. Grip lets you Vader enemies in place and damage them when it's leveled up high enough. Force Deadly Sight, which inflicts damage on anything in your range or field of view. And finally, the thing that most Sith are known for, Force Lightning. Fuck yeah! Except it's bad. Like, 
super bad. You aim it like a gun, so it's difficult to use and hit with, but it does wimpy damage anyway, and it's basically one-upped by another power called Force Destruction. It's so much better. However, these elements do make the game fun to play, and a good and evil system dictating the plot of the game was actually pretty cool at the time. I really liked that game when I was a kid, so imagine my surprise a few years later when I found out Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast. Holy shit! Look at these graphics! <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's back with an updated arsenal and a new bag of tricks. Plot similar to the first game, Forces of Evil, Empire on the Return, and this time he's got a few all-star friends from the Star Wars universe to help move the plot forward. Oh my god, it's Luke Skywalker and Blando Gal Grissian. The live-action scenes were replaced with in-game cutscenes, and the voice acting was overhauled, which is great because Kyle's voice actor, Jeff Bennett, brings a dry, sarcastic delivery to Katarn, making him more relatable as a protagonist. Why can't you Jedi ever do things the simple way? In Kyle's own words, I'm no Jedi, I'm just a guy with a lightsaber and a lot of questions. Kyle's a bit of a hard ass, and isn't afraid to shoot first and not worry about questions because the guy's already dead, who the hell cares? Kyle was one of my first heroes due to my experience with these games. Did I mention I played these when I was like 12? I really liked Kyle Katarn, he was my real dad. Unfortunately, like the last game, you don't get your lightsaber just yet, due to events in the last game. But when you finally do get it after the first two missions, god damn! It's still a little flaily, but the lightsaber combat is more fluid and you can throw it! No! Seriously! You can use the force to throw out your activated saber at range and slice up your opponents. It's barbecue in time! Now for the good bit. This game lets you use all the powers in your disposal as you unlock them. The linear plot means you won't really be able to customize much, but the level design is integrated with your progression of the force, so you get your powers as you need them. Meaning there's no light or dark side, just the Kyle side. The force powers are somewhat the same. Push and pull function the same way. Jump, which thank the maker, is integrated into the fucking spacebar. Heal, which again is a godsend. Mind trick, which is fucking awesome. Works a little bit like persuasion, but you can make enemies consider the droids they were looking for as a distraction and then turn them into allies at a higher level. Grip, you know, lightning, which is actually improved in this game as a spread weapon with a bit higher damage. Effective against droids, really. And finally, speed. The speed power has been improved. A lot. It's now your bread and butter. Seriously. The shift key is usually bound to run and walk, so set it to speed. Like, go in the menu, set it to speed. You'll thank me later. Speed actually slows down the gameplay, allowing you to move faster, fire quickly, and avoid blasts. Hell, combined with the saber, it's devastating, and it's really fucking fun. Also, while we're in the menu changing options, go to game options and trigger slow motion deaths for every saber kill. This is usually saved for the Dark Jedi fights, but now, when you kill any enemy with the saber, the camera will spin around and the game will slow down in a major style fashion. It is, for lack of a better term, the best. It's the best. Now this game is really fun, but the difficulty is ramped up. It's incredibly hard in some parts, going along with what I said about Dark Forces 2. The level design is counterintuitive sometimes and leaves you saying, uh, what, what do I do? Where do I go? Luke, help me. Help. Help. However, Outcast is a wonderful game that has a great story and that can stare most modern Star Wars games in the face with pride. Oh yeah, that's right, now we're not even done yet. BOOM! Jedi Academy. Although Outcast was phenomenal back in the old childhood, this just blew my tiny fucking mind. Jedi Academy has you joining Luke Skywalker School for Gifted Younglings as Jaden Kor, who is you. You get to customize your own Jedi student to train under the Academy's instructors, Luke Skywalker. Holy shit, that's awesome. And Kyle Katarn. You mean, you mean Kyle's gonna be my Jedi Master? Did you, did you write this game for me, like, personally? We start off with our Barry Stu protagonist on the space bus with our new friend Rosh, who is a little too eager and his actor sounds way too familiar. Hold on, who is this? Uh, oh, oh shit, it's Jason Marsden. It's Chester McBadbat and every NPC in Skyrim and Richie from Static Shock and Max from Goof Troop. Dear God, this guy's everywhere. Anyhow, you show up to school on plot day and the dark Jedi, blah, 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 dark side, whatever. Now, the gameplay itself, with the exception of a few stories, missions is entirely episodic. You can pick and choose from a handful of missions to go through each time leveling up a different light or dark side power. This time around, the only new additions are Force Absorb, obvious, Protection, obvious, Drain, which is you vampire health from enemies, actually, that's kind of nice, and Rage, which temporarily decreases health but ups defense, speed, and damage. Neat, but really ineffective. Once again, set speed to shift and enter the matrix in the menu because this time around, this game tells you from the beginning about special moves that you can execute and let me tell you, 
They are cool as shit, but you're only gonna use one. Sure, you get these sweet little saber katas you can do while you're in battle, but they're a little clunky, yet satisfying when they do work. And sure, the speed power is great again, and it's still awesome to run around and slice it up in slow-mo, but the key move you will use is the roll stab. If you run and hit the crouch button, you roll. It's pretty nice. If you attack right as you end the roll, you stab forward right at crotch level. I repeat, right at crotch level. And if you've enabled the matrix function, this means you get a sweet bullet time camera sweep of you instantly cauterizing a stormtrooper's peen. Every single time. It's great. It's, it's really fun. Hey, I heard there was a Jedi on deck five. Be careful. Lightsabers are a pain in the jar. It does get slightly old after a while, but not by much. As you progress through the main story, Luke will tell you about what he senses in your future based on what powers you've bought into, affecting the game's story towards the end. However, I feel as though this would have worked better based on the usage of the powers because I used the hell out of lightning. But that being said, I also used heal just as much, so the point system probably works better. Now, the game also includes another feature that changes the gameplay drastically. After a decisive battle, you lose your original saber you created at the beginning of the game, so you have to make a new one. However, now you can choose from having all three of the saber styles, which is pretty nice, but you can also choose dual sabers! Holy shit, yeah! Look at that shit! This is amazing! Different colors, different hilts. Goddamn, this is awesome! There's no way they could top that. Oh. My god. We about to Darth Maul this shit, motherfucker. Yep, Saber Staff. You can't throw it, but hitting the style switch button turns off one end and lets you use it as such. But the staff allows you to run around, twirl that shit, and kick using the throw button. You can kick enemies over, stab them on the ground, and then twirl that shit over your head and roundhouse a guy in the face. I sense a disturbance in the force, and it's me! Now, the main campaign is alright and all, but the multiplayer is where this game really doesn't get a lot of credit. You can run around, saber your friends in the crotch, and generally just have a ton of fun. There's a crap load of user-generated content that people have made too, and it's awesome. A bunch of cinematic mods and different animations. Hell, you can get Starkiller in here. Hell, there was a lot of Dark Forces mod content as well. You know what? Check out this video by my buddy Blue Drake 42 He did a little spotlight on this with some mod content in it. Uh, I, could, I tried to figure out, I don't know if it was like the Oracle dicks or anus, I don't know. In closing, if you've played various other Star Wars games and haven't delved into these, pick them up. The Humble Bundle ended, unfortunately, but you can still get all of them on Steam, and they're surprisingly cheap to boot. Go get them, have fun, and may the Force be with you. Here is the subscribe button, and the Facebook and the Twitter. Let me know in the comments on stuff you want me to play or watch. Also, you can tell me if there's a voice you want me to say things in. Fun fact, I didn't know this until the other day, but did you know that Darth Vader never actually says, Luke, I am your father in the original Star Wars trilogy? I have seen these movies several times and I could have sworn he said that in there somewhere, but going back and looking, he really didn't. I did not know that. Thanks, guys. Bye bye